five things you wish you had known when you were first diagnosed with diabetes. Yes, the first time. I am Dr. Ahmed Ergin. I'm a diabetologist. I'm a hormone specialist and endocrinologist. Today, we are talking about five things you need to know and will regret if you did not know as a diabetic. So listen up patiently the entire video because there is some golden information all over this video. Well, TikTok may have destroyed your attention span already, but hey, good things take time, right? So watch the entire video to absorb the whole thing because these are important. Let's get started. Number one, diabetes is a progressive disease, right? Some people do not agree with that, but that's true if it is not treated immediately after diagnosis. When you were first diagnosed with diabetes, you had lost already around 50 to 60% of your beta cells, which produce insulin. So that is a fact. You can't deny that. Your beta cells are inflamed and unable to function properly at the time of diagnosis. In reality, you don't become insulin dependent unless you have lost 90% of your beta cells down to 10%. So if you're down to 10% of your beta cells, you will be insulin dependent unless you're totally entirely carb free. Even then you may still need some basal insulin. And the goal is not to go there, right? So not to lose any more of the beta cells. But if you reduce the levels of inflammation in your beta cells, you can still use the beta cells that remain in an optimal way to achieve the normal blood sugar levels. Let's talk about how you are going to accomplish this. When you have too much glucose in your blood, your blood cells become inflamed. We talked about that. The gradient difference between the inside and outside of the cell is differentiated by your beta cells. Your beta cells don't know numbers, right? So they just see the difference. When the blood sugars are high, then the sugar is so pumped into the cell and the outside glucose levels also remain high and your beta cells are almost like paralyzed and inflammatory markers begin to rise and almost as if they are asking for assistance, like calling for help. It's like a flood in your house at that point. Nothing works. Despite the fact that all utilities are present but submerged in the flood, then you should follow a strict diet and possibly use medications or herbs to lower your blood sugar as quickly as possible. Even if you follow a diet sometimes, your blood sugar levels may not fall. Keep in mind that your devices may not start working right after you drain the water flood in your house. You may need to make some adjustments still, right? This is where the medications and supplements can come into play. I'm not saying you should rely on medications and ignore your diet, but sometimes in order to regain the optimal function, you will need the assistance of medications or herbs to repair certain mechanisms that have been broken or damaged as a result of this high inflammation or high blood sugar levels. Once your blood sugars have normalized, you can be extra cautious and possibly even taper off of your medications. And that's my goal. Number two, diabetes is not always associated with being overweight or eating junk food. See, most lay people, including some doctors who have not studied diabetes extensively, like such as family doctors or some other specialties who think that they want to treat diabetes after doing something else for 20 years, believe that diabetes is simply a result of eating too much sugar, right? So not producing enough insulin or, or being overweight, that's all they know. The truth is that 60% of diabetes is hereditary. It is similar to your height. If both of your parents are short, you're more likely to be short too. So if diabetes runs in your family, it means that your body's ability to handle carbs and sugar isn't as good as someone else's. That is why I see many people who weigh around 140 pounds or 63 kilograms for our European audience presenting with diabetes at the age of 50 with 140 pounds or 60 kilos, whereas I have 300 pound patients or people who weigh around 130 kilograms have no signs of diabetes or even insulin resistance. So I'll tell you what, a study was recently published actually on how people store fat 
and how it differs from person to person and how fat distribution on your body affects your risk of developing insulin resistance or diabetes. So at the end of the day, you do not have to judge people or yourself with diabetes for eating junk all the time or being pigs for eating too much, etc. Let's talk about number three. Diabetes is more than just an insulin problem. The last thing that happens during the development of diabetes is insulin deficiency, but that is the last thing. Now, incretins are one of the most important hormones that most people are unaware of. Incretins, also known as GLP-1 hormones, are secreted by your gut when there is food in your gut. When these hormones are dysfunctional, your pancreas will not produce insulin when your blood sugars rise in the absence of signals from these hormones. When these hormones are dysfunctional, your pancreas will not produce insulin when your blood sugars rise in the absence of the signals from these gut hormones, the incretins. These same hormones also govern your feelings of satiety and fullness. You know how you get a feeling of fullness after a big meal? Like you feel, oh my god, I ate too much. Well, this is mostly due to incretins, okay? As a result, some diabetics experience frequent hunger and unable to fast for extended periods of time. So what are you going to do about this now? Well, what should you do if a component in your car fails? What do you do? Shouldn't that be replaced? Yes, right? So some medications and herbs can actually help create the incretin or fix the problem like Ozempic, Trulicity, Rebelsus, Victoza, Bidurian, Bayada, whatever. These are all incretin mimetic medications, which means that they mimic the action of incretin hormones. Some herbs such as bitter melon, fenugreek, amla perform the similar functions just like medications. However, you must be cautious about where you obtain your herbs. In my experience, Ozempic is for example, among the medications is the best in terms of efficacy and side effect profile, followed by Rebelsis and then Victoza and then Trulicity and Bidrain and so forth. Though individual variability will occur, uh, but I'm talking about my overall experience. Despite the fact that they're all incretin mimickers, right? They do not all work the same, although they are similar medications. The same is true for supplements. The only the best and the highest quality ingredients will be found in our advanced glucose supplement. Actually, if you are not aware of it already, we have a supplement that has the herbs that trigger the incretin hormones to make your body make insulin only when you need to. Uh, we are out of stock right now, sorry about that, but I don't know when you're watching this video, but we are planning to release our new advanced for glucose formula right around between the second or third week of February in 2022. So. Please be patient with us. We have been out of stock for a while. I apologize for that, but we are working to get the best of the best for you. And of course, the COVID and all that, everything going on around the world has affected us. So we sincerely apologize for being out of stock for a while. But the new formula is so much stronger, so much better. Believe me. It took us a while because we wanted to get the best and finding the best sometimes isn't easy. So we have your email address. We will notify you. We will send you an email when the product is available in the newsletter. If you are not subscribed to our newsletter, just go to sugarmds.com right now or after this video and subscribe. Put your email down. You're going to get articles that I write every day, the videos, the summaries, the new products, the, the coupons, the discounts, whatever. It's just once a week email that you will get. So if you have not subscribed, please do so right now at sugarmds.com. Nonetheless, the point of the story here is the, talking about the herbs is that if you use these insulin mimickers, right, the, the incretin hormones or incretin hormone creators, whether in a medication or herbal form, you will increase the insulin production four times after meals and re-establish any missing hunger satiety signals, right? On the contrary, if you are taking insulin or sulfonylurea medication like glipozide or glimoparide or gliburide, they raise your insulin levels constantly, forcing you to eat constantly and leaving you hungry all the time. By the way, don't even try to talk to your doctor about this, the herbs that I'm talking about because they will have no idea and they will tell you no right, out, right away 
even if you are forced to pay hundreds of dollars per month for these branded medications, your doctor will not be open to the idea of herbs because they're not trained on it. They're not going to talk about it. They're going to give you a big no. But it's okay as long as you're monitoring your blood sugars, you're able to talk to your doctor and say, hey, my blood sugars are okay. Can we cut medications? You don't have to tell your doctor what you're taking, but you know, he will know that you're doing something good and you will be able to cut back on medications hopefully together with your doctor. I can say this confidently because we, our supplements do not have any interactions with medications or anything like that. Does not have any problem with kidneys or liver, so you can use it very safely. Why do I believe in the herbs? Because I listen to my patients, I listen to their stories and I learn from them and I study myself. That's why we created this alternative treatment plans for our patients. If they are not wanting to take medications or for whatever the reason, we have alternative medications like herbs, etc. Now, number four, diabetes complications can manifest themselves very early, even before a diagnosis is made. So everyone believes that they have time before developing complications such as blindness or kidney disease or neuropathy and heart disease and so forth. Well, the truth is that 30% of diabetes have established cardiovascular disease at the time of diagnosis. They already have it. They don't even know. Even in the absence of neuropathy, I see a lot of, for example, pre-diabetics who complains about pins and needles on their toes. They don't even know that they have neuropathy. By the way, it is actually genetically determined, but you know, some people may get neuropathy earlier than not. Some people may get it like in 10 years into their diabetes. Some people may get it at the pre-diabetes stage. So you have to be alert and like look for signs and symptoms. There's simply no way of knowing what kind of genes you have. So I wouldn't bet my money on say, oh, I have, I hope I have good genes so I can, I, I don't have to take care of my diabetes, then, then you may be in trouble very early on. So now you are aware that complications can arise at any time. Let's talk about what you can do about it, right? First of all, use the principles we discussed earlier to bring the blood sugar under control. The diet, the exercise, the medications, the herbs, whatever it takes, bring those blood sugars down. They must be brought down immediately. While you're at it, you should also take precautions to avoid complications caused by high blood sugars or inflammation and due to diabetes and so forth. For example, in previous videos, we discussed about benfotiamine and how it helps in the prevention of diabetes complications. If you haven't watched it, please do so. We also discussed about like alpha lipoic acid, you know, the B12, vitamin D, acetyl L carnitine, and some other nutrients. So, replacing and supplementing these items, these things, lowers the risk of developing a variety of complications. Now, Knowing this, we also developed something called Sugar MD Neuropathy Support, which is currently available on our website. It contains everything I like, such as the benfotiamine, the alpha lipoic acid, the B12, the B6, the vitamin D, and l carnitine and so forth. So make sure to use it to get the most out of it. When used on a regular basis, this product helps to reduce the neuropathy pain and because it helps nerves recover naturally by providing what nerves require for protection and repair, but also it helps other complications because if you watch that other benfotiamine video, you will see how benfotiamine and alpha lipoic acid actually can stop the complications from happening. Well, number five is exercise. Exercise, not just carbohydrate restriction, right, can play an equal or greater role in diabetes management. So when you're first diagnosed, you usually talk to people around you or your doctor and search some information on the internet. And it appears that diabetes is like a death sentence and you can no longer enjoy anything you're used to. Well, that's not entirely correct. Exercise actually allows you to be much more flexible with your diet. Of course, if you're drinking like sweet tea or regular Coke and stuff like that and eating a lot of bread and rice every meal, you gotta change that, that's no question, which isn't too difficult. You don't have to entirely eliminate them, but if you don't want to completely eliminate that, then you can still enjoy them as long as you burn them off with exercise, right? So it becomes very difficult to tolerate any carb if you're not exercising. The advantage of this free medication we call exercise is that if you do it every 
every every day, like 30 minutes, most of the days, you know, five to seven days, will 100% every time will lower your blood sugar, improve cholesterol levels, and help your body manage insulin so much better. I recommend exercising every day because it's almost like becomes a ritual after a while and becomes a habit and it bothers you if you don't do it. However, if you take breaks, you may become distracted and forget about it, get busy with something else and you may lose motivation. So do it every day. Try to set and achieve your goals. And if you're already enjoying what you're doing, keep doing it. If you normally go for walks, you know, turn them into jogs, right? Make them maybe a little longer, for example. If you haven't done any exercise before, it is critical not to be intimidated by the prospect of starting if you are not already extremely active. So take it easy. Walking, for example, can help your blood sugar, you know, just a little bit of a walking every day can improve your heart, heart health. If you are unable to walk, you can still exercise while sitting. I have even done a video for you and it's right here. So please be cautious if you have disability, unable to use your joints, you can definitely do exercise when you're sitting. So guys, these are the five things you wish you would have known. Maybe you did already some of these and maybe it is just reiteration. Maybe it's more motivation for you today. So please give a thumbs up, please like and share, and we will see you guys in the next video. Don't hesitate to ask questions. Talk to you later. Hey guys, I hope you're enjoying this channel so far and I hope you subscribed already. If you didn't, do it. And if you did, watch this video right there. I think that will help you too.